Hello YouTube, this is Morgan, Airspeed Prime here with my next Borto anime episode review. This one's going to be for episode 41, which is called Strength in Unity. And uh, yeah, this was a very, very good episode. Um, it was a little bit surprising in that I didn't quite expect them to end the first mission arc like this soon, basically just have it be a two-parter. But I think in a way it worked in that while they're trying to make some similarities to Naruto, the original Team 7's first mission... They're also kind of trying to say that they're in an era right now where while they will encounter more difficult missions, they're not <clears throat> they're not going to be on that level of being that difficult um, as they were in the past because there is no like massive wars going on. Most of it's going to be uh, minor issues involving kind of like ex Shinobi as we got here. So I think the episode did a really good job of kind of acknowledging the similarities to the Land of Waves arc, but then pointing out these little things to make it be like, okay, it's not as big as it was before in that the two shinobi here are not on the level of a, of a, of a Zabuza, so Konohamaru is just so much better than them. The only difficulty here is that it's a hostage situation and that he can't do everything on the mission so he has to put some reliance of the mission on the rest of the team which is where their teamwork had to come into play we got like uh, Kiri's father's backstory um, and the overall I suppose theme of the episode being about uh, teamwork not doing things on your own and uh, relying on others I suppose um, which I think made for a very good episode with some very very memorable moments of course the fights are obviously going to be the the key moments but even just to the start that they they made the the episode feel like it was still a kind of threatening mission that it wasn't just a simple but slightly difficult mission because here's this guy who's trying to um sell the the deed to the bridge for money and he's hired these shinobi and they just kill him because they say they're ex shinobi and that was kind of a, a little bit surprising that they just had a guy get, just get stabbed like that and he's dead right in front of this young leader of the village. Um, it was very dark and I suppose hinting towards that like we're getting back into these kind of maybe periods where there are more conflicts at play. Um, but uh, yeah, the, the the core of the episode I think really did come down to the, the action scenes that we got and uh, Konohamaru versus the, uh, the, the, the kind of smaller ninja was I think just an excellent display of power for Konohamaru in that he's he's just doing the standard ninja thing of just using kind of like acrobatics and speed and then skill with the kunai to kind of fend him off and then he gets caught in this was this guy's signature jutsu which is like this uh, kind of clone trap uh, where he kind of uses a uh, it looks like an earth clone and he traps Konohamaru's hand in it and it puts a seal on him and then he just starts insulting Konohamaru about how the, the Leaf Village uh, ninja are soft and like they're easy to defeat. That's why they send kids on this mission. And then Konohamaru, I, I really like what they did with Konohamaru in this episode of just, um, I think, acknowledging the fact that um, he is kind of a, Naruto's sort of like apprentice to a degree, that Naruto directly trained him. Naruto put a lot of faith on Konohamaru to you know make this mission a success in as well as the fact that you know he's putting his his son in Konohamaru's hands as well so there's this sense of just for a little bit of I suppose later life Konohamaru um development they had him really step up to his role as you know captain of the team and it made for this obviously amazing moment of I think I think us really finally seeing just how skilled Konohamaru actually is with just the fact that here he is, he just uses the Rasengan, which we know he can do, but they add in the fact that, oh, he has the Wind-style Rasengan now, and the fact that he uses it in such a, like, a perilous position, and then has such control over it to, um, you know, aim it as well as he did, and then the amount of damage that it actually did, and I suppose the control as well that he had to realise that this was a situation where he didn't have to hurt or try to kill his opponent here, that... There came a point where he realized that the power level between the two of them was so big that this guy really, when it came down to it, didn't have the backbone needed. Um, he could just kind of scare him into submission. And um, it made for an amazing Konohamaru moment. The, the, the look of confidence on his face where he just kind of stares at the other guy with the Rasengan in his hand 
and just charges at him. It was a, uh, it was a really cool. It, it was kind of Konohamaru's like early Kakashi style moment from the original series, and it was a uh, really good to get. And then, kind of, I suppose bookmarking that with the end of the episode and him reporting to Naruto and Naruto being all praised. And then I think the icing on the cake was Naruto calling him, you know, like well done, Captain of Team Seven, and. Konohamaru being like temporarily taken aback by like the, this nice bit of praise but um, I suppose that's it for him that like he's still I suppose growing as a ninja to a degree in that he, I don't think he's meant to be as experienced as a Kakashi but getting there so him being well respected as like I suppose what seems to be like one of his, fir his first potential um, role as being a, the captain of a squad is a uh, it's a notable thing for him and his progression as a shinobi as well. So I thought the Konohamaru stuff throughout the episode was very, very well done. Um, as for I suppose, the, the Kiri stuff, she obviously gets uh, captured and then uh, Boruto, Sarada, and Mitsuki kind of take her away to, to save her. And we get, I suppose, the, the plot of the episode is basically that they all discuss the fact that she did a lot of this stuff on her own trying to be the head of the village that she felt she needed to be by being the the like center of strength in the village without realizing that the the villagers always helped her father she always thought her father was like a, an individual kind of um leader who always did stuff by himself when in fact the villagers always acknowledged him as he always included them in, in decisions that he would make and while he would be that central pillar of the village he always made decisions with the other people in mind whereas while she still cares about the village of course her mistake was not including them with any of the plans that were going on not i suppose making them aware of the fact that you know th this deed is a valuable valuable thing enemies could attack us for this and what should we do instead she decided on her own and i think that they acknowledged the fact that she made the right decision to call in the the konoha shinobi um, but not telling anyone was her mistake and they used that to be kind of uh, Borto's development and I, and I like that it wasn't too big of an issue of like okay Borto in the previous episode you went off on your own a couple of times and you got a cut on your arm uh, here is Kiri who did somewhat, something somewhat similar to you but in a, a kind of different sort of leadership position um, look at the similarities between you you two and you know, learn from it that you can see where she went wrong. Now you have your opportunity on this mission to kind of fix that. And so immediately he realizes the importance of teamwork and that that's what got Kiri into this mess. Now he has to show his teamwork with the group to kind of demonstrate to Kiri, I suppose, the, not the error of her ways, but show her the benefit of, I suppose, communicating better with people. So I thought, I thought that basic idea for the episode was good simple but uh just a, a nice little thing for their first mission to kind of demonstrate to borto that like yeah okay it's not going to be a key trait of his character that he does stuff on his own um it'll probably still be a slight factor but i don't think it'll be as um i suppose borderline annoying potentially as it was in the first episode here where he did do everything on his own he just jumped immediately to try and do something um so that 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 I think worked, um, especially with how they resolved it at the end of her coming back to the village and you know apologizing and just admitting that you know she's maybe not the leader that uh, they expected her to be, but that she's gonna you know change things up going forward. And she I think at the end really demonstrated that she's kind of definitely has the potential to become the the key leader that this uh, village actually needs. Um, and then as for the, uh, I suppose the Team 7 fight, uh, Mitsuki, Sarada and Borto versus the bigger ninja, uh, that was really cool as well. They, they didn't uh, spend too long in the fight, they more went for the idea of like, okay look, we've now lowered these ninjas to the point where like, they're a threat, they're like solid opponents for our, our group, but that, you know, we were pretty confident our team is going to get the victory here. So I, I really did like when... They went for the teamwork of like, okay, Mitsuki and Borto are going to like uh, basically move this guy around so that Sarda can stay back and kind of analyze his movements, analyze how quick he is. And then when she joins the, the fight, the three of them can kind of use the fact that Sarda has this um, you know, Sharingan knowledge basically of the opponent and they can get through his guard that way. 
So they kind of used the uh, the Borto stream kind of type thing, using I suppose the, um, the, the they, what do they say here? The kind of like analysis of Sarada, the fact that her vision and analysis allows them to the like, quickest reactions to get through the attack. Uh, they use the, the like speed power that Mitsugi has with his wind style jutsu, and then they have the creativity for Borto of like none of the others would kind of think to use wind style jutsu in a way to like like send someone flying towards the opponent like that. Um, so it was a cool teamwork, and I liked how they, they went about explaining why it was a, a good piece of teamwork, and the the animation on it was really well done. As Sara to just you know s changes the angle of her body last minute. Um, Punches him in the stomach and then does the the whole you know Sakura kind of cherry blossom crash type thing, uh, what is it called like Shanaru punch uh, right into the ground and you see his body and there's like a dent in it so like they obviously they're not trying to say that she she killed him but that it was a pretty devastating attack that he was given, um, and yeah it, it, that was more more or less the core of the episode they come back you know Borto's bragging to the others about the, their mission and. They basically established that none of the other teams went on a mission anywhere near as dangerous as Borto's team did. And he feels quite cool about that. That he went on the mission, he learned something from it, whereas the others kind of just were picking up giant turnips and escorting people around on like shopping trips. Um, and then Sarge just notes that like, okay, he knows teamwork, but he's never really going to change from being a little bit of uh, bragging like he always does. So... Uh, solid ending to the episode, and I think the first mission arc I thought was quite good here. I think it furthers the idea of... I think they have a long way to go to get Borto to the point where he is the way he is going into the Borto movie stuff. So, that still remains a very, very interesting point for me of just... What way is the anime going to tackle the movie once we get to it? Because based on the preview <clears throat> for next week's episode, it looks like we're kind of entering into like a a period in the show where we're probably just going to get a bunch of missions. Um, next week's episode, I think, looks okay, but it could... I think depending on how they do it, it could feel a little fillery. Um, I think what they need to do going forward is use the other teams effectively. Characterize them by like focusing on their missions kind of like they did in, in terms of a lot of the filler episodes of like the final I think it's like final like 80 or 100 episodes of Naruto the ones after the plot ends like in between we start was starting uh, Shubuden where what they did there where they kind of had team ups of like because Naruto's team is like separated or and so on um, he was put uh, on a mission with like this team or uh, he teams up with these two specific people from other teams and does this mission I, I'd like to see something like that where maybe we have the different teams working together to get more characterization because I want to see like a Iwabe, Metal Lee and uh, Denki uh, see them on a mission uh, and I assume that they, they spent a lot of time giving them new character designs because that's what we're actually going to get so uh, I think what they need to do going forward now is just if they if we are just going to be in kind of like mission focus from here on out is make them interesting focus on like I think character development even if you can't do anything super notable with the like plots and the enemies at least use the fact that you can characterize all of these new um, teams well to kind of really bring us forward in that I think there's two teams where we basically know nothing about the characters there's that uh, one interesting guy who sort of looks like Kakashi, or at least wears his gear in a way where it looks very, very similar to Kakashi. So I'd, li I'd like to see like an episode where just Team 7 is forced to team up with that team, and we learn about those characters, or something like that. that that's what would make it interesting. Unless we're moving along very quickly on just a couple of missions, a couple of episodes, and we're getting towards tuning exam type stuff, but... We have to wait and see. I, I'm not really sure about what the overall direction is kind of for the next group of episodes. But in the comments, let me know what your thoughts were on this episode, where you think the show is going. But uh, yeah, that's been the video. Thanks for watching and bye.